everybody, it is Randy with Carchaeology, and I've got a story to tell you about this wild wrought iron bodied Volkswagen Beetle. Okay, I am standing in my own front yard here out at the lab, and for the past couple of years, I've had this Volkswagen body sitting out here in the garden. And it's just kind of yard art at the moment, um, but this at one point was a running and driving vehicle, and one with a very special history. In fact, this particular car, I actually owned, God, probably 20 years ago now, maybe a little bit longer, um, and then it came back to stay here at the lab uh, just a few years ago. So the story behind this car was one day I was looking at the local ads, I saw this pop up for sale, and I went down to Los Angeles to buy it. It was an older Mexican gentleman, he called the car Cinderella, and the story of the car was that when he was down in Mexico, he came across this body sitting abandoned outside of the city. Now, the he checked around with all the neighbors, tried to figure out whose it was. Uh, it was obviously just the body. There was no suspension or chassis or numbers or anything on it. Um, and so he, uh, he grabbed it, and then he brought it with him when he came to Los Angeles many years later. So this was back in the 1980s, I think, when he found it. Um, and in any case, uh, he brought it back. And then he found a Volkswagen chassis. It was one that was from a Super Beetle. He had cut it down to kind of loosely put the body on there. I don't know if he ever got it up and running and driving, but he was getting to be quite old when I met him, and he really wanted to find it a good home. And I promised him that. I ended up bringing this car back to my shop when I lived in Orange County. I removed the chassis that... Uh, it was on because it was definitely not the correct one for it. I ended up finding one that was correct for it. I had it on display in my shop for a number of years. And then when we moved from Orange County out to the countryside here, I was trying to get rid of some stuff. And so I sold this to a friend of mine named Scott that runs a place called Carmen Gia Parts and Restoration or Airhead Parts up in Ventura, California. And Scott took it, he put it up on one of the shelves in his shop. Uh, it was there for many years, entertaining customers and himself. And then when he was moving shop and selling off some stuff, he said he was gonna put this up for sale. And I asked him if we could do something together on it, and that sounded like a good idea. So this was maybe a few years ago or so. I brought this thing back uh, to my shop here. The plan was to put it on a chassis, get it up and running and driving. And then we had all sorts of crazy stuff happen, COVID and so on and so forth. And it's been sitting here for, well just the past few years. Now, I had always thought I would talk to Scott about buying it from him and then maybe building it, um, but somebody beat me to the punch and a gentleman that uh, is that expressed interest in this years ago with Scott, in fact, even tried to buy it, even negotiated to buy it um, from him, uh, stepped up, got in touch with Scott and struck a deal on it. And I've been informed just a few days ago that the car is going to be picked up and it's going to go off to Europe. Now it's kind of bittersweet to see it leave because it's been really fun to have it out here in the yard, but really looking at the way all of it went down, it spent some time here. It came back to me to hang out for a bit, but really it's Scott's car to do it with as he pleases. And Patrick, who is the new owner, has expressed extreme interest in it and has been very consistent over the past few years in trying to get it. And he finally struck that deal. So it's going to get picked up here and moved out of the yard shortly. But before that happens, I wanted to do a video on it and tell you the story of the wrought iron Volkswagen Bugs. So, there are quite a few of these that are out there in the world. There's a whole variety of different ones out there, but the most prolific builder of this sort of vehicle was a gentleman by the name of Rafael Prieto um, Esparza. And Rafael came from a long line of blacksmiths down in Mexico. Uh, he would do wrought iron work and things like that. He worked at a Volkswagen parts place uh, in Mexico City uh, back in the 1960s. And at one point, his boss asked him to build a wrought iron beetle shape to put up on the roof of the building as an advertisement for the shop. 
And he did that. And it was pretty well received. Everyone really liked that. It was something that uh, brought some charm to the neighborhood and caught a lot of attention. It also caught the attention of some people that work for Volkswagen at the Pueblo factory. Now, the at this time, uh, this is in the late 1960s, and the Olympics were coming up to be in Mexico City in 1968. And Volkswagen... Uh, approached Raphael and asked him to build two cars uh, that were running and driving vehicles that they could display at the Olympic Games in 1968. And Raphael did that. And then as all the Volkswagen dignitaries came into town for the Olympic Games and they saw the Rod Iron Beetle, well, they contacted him to build some more of them. Over the years, he built quite a few of these. When he uh, came to California, uh, and immigrated in the 1980s. He built one for himself, uh, or actually for a friend of his that ran a Mexican food restaurant up in Santa Barbara um, called Casa Linda. Uh, that car sat out in front of the Casa Linda restaurant for many years and was a real popular tourist attraction. I actually purchased that car uh, a number of years ago as well, and it was a running, driving, amazing car. Here's some images of it there. That car ended up going off to a collector uh, in Ohio uh, called the Taj Garage Collection. And now it's on a display in a museum uh, in, uh, in the Midwest, I believe. In any case, uh, Raphael built that car for his friend and then he started working on one for himself in his later years. Unfortunately, he passed away before he could complete that final car for himself. But since I had had a history with this particular car as well as the Casa Linda one and had posted some articles and information online about them, the family knew I existed and they knew I was the right car to right person to take it on. And so the unfinished project of Raphael came my direction and we finished that car off. Uh, most of the scroll work was done, but there were still some areas that needed to be completed. And my brother, who happens to be a metal fabricator and artist of his own right, this sculpture back behind here is one of his works, he took it on to finish all of the uh, spots that were unfinished on Raphael's final car. And when that car was done, uh, I sold it to Gene Langan of Langan Volkswagen in Connecticut, and he has that car on display in the dealership there. So believe it or not, I've had three of Raphael's wrought iron beetles in my possession over the years, which is really totally insane because all told, we figure there was about 28 of them perhaps total, somewhere right around there. And uh, several of them are still in Volkswagen's hands. There's one at the museum in Wolfsburg. There is also one with Volkswagen of America uh, back in the Midwest. Uh, there's one of these that is owned by the West Coast Metric Collection uh, here in Southern California. Uh, there's one in Japan that's a part of the Flat 4 Collection. And there are several other ones that are out there and about. And uh, I think out of the 20-odd ones that have been made, we figure, um, gosh, maybe there's a good dozen of them left. Plus, there are other cars that have been built in the same fashion um, that have been done by uh, different artists out and about. And one of them actually drove their Beetle from Canada out here to California, and they visited with me and this wrought iron Beetle on their road trip. Uh, they ended up sending that car off to Europe and actually traveling around through Europe in it as well until the authorities stopped him and said, hey, this thing is not legal for uh, roads in Europe. And unfortunately, their trip was cut short. But they did get one of these cars onto European soils and travel around in them. In any case, uh, I'll do a quick walk around here and show you some of the details on this particular one, which based upon the story from the old man and my knowledge there, I think this may be one of the two original cars that were done in 68 for the Olympics. But unfortunately, I've got no proof of that and I've not been able to find any actual photos 
of that car uh, or of either one of those cars at the Olympic Games. So uh, hopefully something like that will pop up. It does seem like every single one of these that was built had some unique qualities to it as far as the scroll work and things like that. Uh, this one being an early one done, it's a very open design. A uh, lot of uh, negative space there. It's very lightweight. Uh, the door handles are cool. The doors do open. There is a bit of a dashboard there. Uh, the hood, the deck lid, those open as well. Um, really nice little minimal latches there. Uh, and this is something that'll set just on to a regular Volkswagen chassis. And Patrick, the uh, new owner of this one, has already purchased one of those in Europe and is starting the restoration of that. And when this car lands over there, this body lands over there, my guess is he will waste no time in making this a roadworthy car. So there you go, Rod Iron Volkswagen Beetle. A long visit for this particular one here at the lab. A revisit for me personally because I owned this thing some number of years ago. And a really fun story to share with you folks as well as the VW scene out there in the world. The Rod Iron Bug is certainly one of the most unique artistic creations ever done on a Volkswagen chassis. And it still blows me away that I've had three different ones of these enter my life. But there you go. That's Carchaeology history on wheels, even though there's really no wheels under this one yet. I'm sure there will be at some point. Thanks so much for watching. Keep on digging them up and driving them. Bye-bye.